Whether you are aiming for an executive position or you're aiming all the way to the top to the CEO role, you need to start exhibiting all five of the habits I'll walk you through today. And you need to start doing it now. Make them second nature. Missing out on a single one of them can prevent you from climbing anywhere near the top. So grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea because this is an important video. If you have ambitions of one day becoming an executive and maximizing your impact, it's very important for you to start working on your executive presence early in your career. In this video, we will talk about what executive presence is, why you need executive presence. I've also selected five habits that contribute heavily to your executive presence. And you can start working on all five habits today, no matter where you are in the organization. So what is this mystical executive presence? Most people know it when they see it, but the way I'd explain it to someone is, executive presence is inspiring trust in the people below you in the organization, as well as the people above you in the organization. For the people under you in the organization, you're a leader they will gladly follow. For the people above you in the organization, you're someone of great potential with a bright future ahead of you. Executive presence also means that your appearance isn't distracting. You always make a good first impression and you're always dressed for the occasion. And when you walk into a room, you do it with your back straight, have positive energy and are ready to interact. A lot of this is about confidence. So let me show you one thing that can make a big difference. Let's say it's the bonus habit of this video. This right here, going to the gym, has really helped with my confidence. And it's not just getting your body in physical shape. Having a regular exercise routine also helps stimulate your mind. Why do you need executive presence? Well, the benefits of starting to work on these habits today are many. The main thing though, is that it will open up many opportunities for you. Whether it is putting you in a good place for a promotion or getting the trust to lead that high visibility project. You will also earn the trust of new people around you faster. This means you can spend less time building trust and more time executing. And I think you can see how executive presence also has a big benefit if you're in sales. Or if you have problem with people not listening to you at work or taking you seriously, working on the five habits that we will talk about today will change all of this. And before we continue, please leave a like. It takes a second, it's free, but it helps me a lot. Let's dive into the five habits of an executive that you should start exhibiting today. And make sure you watch all the way to the end because each and every one of them are equally important. Executives are excellent communicators, so start building your communication skills early. Learn to communicate with confidence. Never ever let emotions taint your message. And executives are never long-winded, they're always to the point. This goes for every form of communication, whether it's written, verbal, or virtual. You also need to understand how you communicate at different levels of the organization. And you do that by understanding what's important to whom. As you improve your communication skills, you also understand that different people want their information in different ways. Some are very visual, some want numbers to back everything, and so on. No matter who you communicate to, focus on clarity, and conciseness. Communicate with conviction and project confidence. Executives have removed weak language and filler words from their vocabulary. And if you, like me, work in an English-speaking workplace and English is your second language, this will be a bit harder. And to inspire confidence in others, you need to know where you're heading. You need to have a compelling vision and you need to be able to convey it to the people around you whether it's to your team or to an executive in a brief meeting to get funding. Your vision is what sets you apart from everyone else. Let me repeat that. Your vision is what sets you apart from everyone else. And you don't have to have a formal leader position to have a vision. You can be a coder or a quality analyst or whatever. Having a vision shows that you wanna have a bigger positive impact. It shows that you care about more than your day to day that you have ambitions and you wanna make a positive change in the workplace. 
I try to take some time for myself once in a while to reassess my vision since I work in such a fast-paced and ever-changing work environment. And I do that by scheduling time for myself. I turn off my phone, I take a walk and I reflect. Executives have developed an understanding of how the people around them perceive them. As you ascend in an organization, you need to be intentional about how you are perceived in different situations. Before you walk into a room, take a deep breath and put yourself in the right mindset for the message you're going to convey or for the discussion you're about to have. I have always felt quite self-aware, but I still find it useful with meditation or with mindfulness. People with executive presence are great listeners. They are fully present in any conversation they're in. They listen more than they speak and they are empathetic. So learn to ask great open-ended questions. Listen to understand and always be in the moment. No matter what craziness is going on around you, your listening skills will also help you build a strong network. And you have to remember that as an executive, you mainly work through others. So your effectiveness will be heavily dependent on your ability to listen and understand others. With strong listening skills, you will also draw people to you and develop strong charisma. I've had a tendency to jump to conclusions earlier in my career, wanting to give people solutions instead of listening and letting people come to their own conclusions first. I've gotten better at this by resetting myself before each one-on-one -on -one and making sure I'm 100% in the moment. Because I'm there for the person, not to solve the problem. With executive presence, you're always calm and present because you only focus forward. You learn from what happens, you add it to your experience and knowledge, and you move on. You never ever dwell over the past. This is where we are right now. What is the best way forward? Knowing what we know, with the parameters we have, and using the experience we've gained. And again, dwelling on the past never leads to anything good. It leads to bad energy, waste of time, and bad emotions. It's important that all the people around you feel they can turn to you because you're the ever calm presence and you're there to help them with guidance. This is something that always came very natural to me, both in work life and my personal life. For you, it may come natural too, but many need to work hard on this. And the sooner you can do this in all aspects of your life, the better you will feel and the more effective you will be. Before we continue, let me quickly recap the five habits. Learn to communicate well, know where you're heading, be self-aware and intentional, listen and show empathy, only focus on the future. And make sure you listen up because here comes an important point. To improve in all these five habits, you should constantly seek feedback from the people that you interact with on a regular basis. And as I've said repeatedly through this video, start working on these habits now, make them second nature and be very mindful about them. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any additional habits you feel are important to people with executive presence. I drop videos every Tuesday, so check back next week. Until then, have a great week and I'll see you again next Tuesday.